take a walk with us down memory lane, or maybe help spark a conversation with a loved one about the way farms used to sound. With your Amazon device or Alexa app, say, Alexa, play country farm sounds and escape to a mid-1900s farm where they will take a walk during morning chores. Hey everybody, I'm Paul Yeager. This is the MTOM studio in full function at Iowa PBS. Glad to have you here. Making a few visual changes for those of you that watch the podcast that comes out each and every Tuesday. You may start to notice some changes again. Uh, for those that listen, hopefully it's still the same. Uh, today, we are going to discuss a similar topic, but from a different aspect. We're going to talk about energy, solar energy specifically, with Alliant Energy, a energy company based in Iowa. Nick Peterson, who is the strategic partnerships manager for Alliant, is the guest. He's going to sit right here. I'm going to ask him about a new collaboration with Iowa State University in Ames that is mixing solar panels and agriculture, specifically food production, together. It's a term called agrovoltaics. We've talked about it before on this podcast, and we're doing it again as we learn about this uh, grant and research project that's happening, how these two are coming together. We'll get into a little bit of Nick's background, of course, like I always do, talk about solar, but really about this partnership between the two. If you have uh, feedback for me, hit me up with an email. It's paul.yeager, Y-E-A-G-E-R, at iowapbs.org. Reminder, new episodes come out every Tuesday. We love having you tell a friend or share, whether you watch or listen. Thank you. Here is our conversation. You're kind of a big deal before you took your job and came in here. I didn't understand Young Professional of the Year. How'd that come about? Um, I've been lucky enough and fortunate enough to be around some amazing people here in Iowa that have uplifted and empowered me um, and and did so in a few different things, both professionally and then personally in the uh, time I give in the community. And so, yeah, back in 2017, uh, I was lucky enough uh, to be honored by the Des Moines Register as Young Professional of the Year. Is that a pay? Are you? Did you grow up in Des Moines? Uh, I grew up in Madrid, Iowa. Madrid. So just just okay. between Ames and Des Moines. So farm guy or just little small town guy? A small town guy. Proud small town guy. Yeah, the Madrid Tigers. That's a kind of a big deal. Did you play football for? Uh, everybody did, didn't they? Everybody in Madrid plays football for Coach Hinkle, and now and now the new Coach Hinkle. And the new Coach Hinkle. Do you? What was your goal as a kid? What were you thinking you would do? Uh, crazy enough, uh, I wanted to be a school teacher. I uh, grew up uh, in Madrid with some great, great educators, wanted to be a teacher, uh, went to school uh, to be a teacher in college, uh, and I graduated during the market downturn where the teaching profession wasn't hiring. So uh, went into a little bit different, different avenue, uh, went the higher education route, and uh, actually worked in college athletics uh, for a number of years uh, on the West Coast and uh, was able to kind of learn the ecosystem that is higher education acad academia and how to how to work with that due to my interactions uh, out in out in Seattle and then uh, was lucky enough to uh, come back to Iowa about 10 years ago and uh, worked for some uh, nonprofits doing fundraising uh, and then uh, local government helping uh, figure out how to navigate public-private partnerships because that's what I've done since coming out of college is figure out how to translate the great things that the public sector does and the great things that the private sector does and bring that collaboration together. And that's how I'm here today with you around Align Energy. I was going to say, that's the first time I've even heard the word energy. I haven't heard anything about electricity or solar power or wind energy, I mean, any of that. So uh, how do you bridge partnerships to your employer? Well, I would say uh, the first thing is, is I'm lucky enough to have some absolutely brilliant coworkers that help have helped educate me on the basics around utilities and energy and get me up to speed on, uh, you know, the advancements in rural energy. But then also, um, you know, having that op opportunity to really think about how we handle our relationships, how we handle um, strategy and how we handle 
uh, just supporting our communities and doing the right thing. Uh, I bring in the other skills that are needed to um, to help translate those visions into reality. I guess I never asked, what did you want to teach? What subject? Social studies. Okay, so not Economics. even... Economics. Not even science. I love science. This so second favorite subject. Okay, so second favorite subject. Oh, of course, yes. So your job is, to me, a lot of science, or is it not? It, it, well, my job directly is to figure out how to connect people to the science. So a little social studies, a little, social a little studies, economics. Yes, and then it, it, a little economics, and then it's figuring out how do we bring these relationships together to make sure that the folks that are really good at science and really good at economics and other things are working together in cross-functional groups for success, which... Uh, you know, I, I think going back to education, it's always conveying the right ideas to the right people and helping bring people together and moving and progressing society. Mid-American as a company, we have a lot of knowledge in, in market-to-market -market land because of their history with wind turbines. Alliant has been in the renewable game in what capacity? Uh, in comparison, I guess, to, to, yeah. your other, to the other power company in Iowa. Obviously, uh, MidAmerican is a, a leader in the nation in wind energy. Uh, we are, I, I would say we are fortunate enough uh, to be on the same trajectory in the sense that we are the third largest utility-owned uh, wind operator in the nation. So uh, although we, we aren't at the same level of the sheer volume that MidAmerican has, we are uh, also a leader in renewable energy, uh, especially in wind and now uh with the foray into uh, solar, uh, we're continuing to diversify our portfolio. Is is it more because of where you're located geography, or is it the way that the energy industry is going that Alliant has dipped into this? Great question. I would say it's it's a mixture of both. One, it's doing the right thing for our customers and our communities uh, and investing in alternative sources of energy, uh, it just makes good sense when you look at fuel costs and you look at different things. We've got to do what's right for our customers and what's going to give them the uh, biggest benefit long term. So that's where the vision for adding renewables in, whether it was a couple decades ago when we started our wind program to now when we've, you know, doing solar, battery storage, continuing wind, it's continuing to look at what's the best thing for our customers long-term. We've been a company in some form for over 100 years. We plan to be here for another 100. But it's also, we to do so, we have to do what's right for our, our customers and our communities. Um, and then I would say, in terms of an energy perspective, there's a lot of cost mechanisms that make renewable energy a really smart decision for, for us as a company. I'm listening to you and my head is thinking about all this infrastructure that you had set up in that 100 years was coal-fired plants or some type of power plant to generate the electricity to send down the line, to send into my home and to use. Now you're changing that infrastructure around and you have to find new ways. Wind turbines uh, are, and by the way, do you say wind turbines or wind turbines? Ooh, good question. Because I always get in trouble sometimes uh, when I say it differently. Do you have I don't have a preference, okay. but I'm also probably not the one to ask that question to within our. But what, what I what why I ask that is because you you have to set up now. I mean, when wind transmission is when wind energy is created, it has to be transmitted somewhere. Now with solar being created, it has to be transmitted. And what's the difference in setting up that infrastructure and that cost of figuring out where new projects come on that best benefit customers? Sure, uh, our our renewables team takes a ton of time and effort and due diligence to find the right spots and to find the right places to to allocate our renewable energy. Uh, actually, some places that make really good spots are where we've turn, turned our old coal plants, it retired our old coal plants and turned them into renewable energy uh, generation assets. Uh, we're, we're looking at that as a great place um, just because you already have the infrastructure built it allows us to do it at a cost that's a lot lower for our customers. So use existing lines to get to those plants? Is that what you mean too? Or just the plants themselves and you've put panels all over those, yes. those plants? Well, so 
one of the projects that um, uh, a, a partner company is working on right now is the um, the Dwayne Arnold site, payload, where the the nuclear plant is, was no longer viable uh, option to generate energy. Uh, they are in the process of decommissioning and tearing down that plant, and in turn, we're putting in a 400, I believe it's 400 megawatt uh, solar facility there. And NextEra is developing and creating that, and Alliant Energy has announced that we will purchase that from NextEra once they finish the construction of the site, and we will own and operate it. Um, that's a great um, example of leveraging existing infrastructure for all that, that transmission lines, all the substations that were built to handle that, that nuclear energy power plant is now going to be able to be utilized to um, facilitate renewable energy in that area and uh, allow those, um, those infrastructure costs to not be um, burdened or, or uh, kind of lost to, to the fact that the, the, the nuclear plant can no longer produce energy. So you have a 40-acre site, for example. I mean, I'm just roughly guessing what that might be. Now, instead of it having nuclear whatever, it has solar Correct. whatever in the yep. spot. And you're sending out the power all throughout the veins that are around that area. I get it. Okay. So you, so you bring up a point that I think we're, we're trying to get to. Using I people who question all the time in Market to Market about, like, I don't want a wind turbine on my farm. I don't want a solar array cutting up this big farm. I don't want... So I asked some of these people, why don't you just you? Why aren't there solar panels on top of all of these big distribution warehouses or facility, you know, large scale buildings that just... Where is that? Th that thinking to me is all kind of the same of, I don't, I want it, but I don't want to see it. You know, it, it, it all depends on on the user and the 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 customer who's electing to support some of our programs. Um, you know, rooftop is definitely a viable option in certain cases, uh, but when you're getting into utility scale, you the ground mount is a much more reliable and much more uh, feasible construction option. Uh, when you're looking at the going up to the one megawatt and above. Um, scale scalability of renewable energy rooftop makes a little less sense now there are times where it does uh, but it's finding the right options and you know I'm lucky enough we have a great renewables team that kind of goes and again does that due diligence to figure out what the right what the right context is what the right support is to uh, scale up our solar uh, projects to the right level and figure out the right space for it because in some cases, couldn't it just be used some of that power right there on site? Can can I figure out a way to invert what comes from the sun and it powers my assembly line? Yeah, potentially there are companies that are are doing uh, behind the meter solar uh, projects with uh, with other third party solar vendors to do stuff like that. And so there are definitely opportunities for folks to do it. Um, we at Alliant don't do any of the net metering because of being a, a regulated utility. Uh, we focus on what's going to be beneficial for the entire community and all of our customer base rather than just one singular customer. Some of your customers are ag customers. Some of them are city customers. And you have to figure out when there's land and when there's a 40 acres. I'll go back to that number. It's an easy one to, to talk about. But I've got this 40 acres that seems prime for solar, but it also could be used for agriculture. Tell me that term. Where did it come about and how did you get involved with it? Sure. So agrivoltaics is the uh, process of uh, leveraging the land underneath the solar panels for farming or gardening. Um, I would say we started our project uh, about three and a half years ago, and it really came from a pragmatic decision uh, around uh, environmental and sustainability goals uh, that, that Iowa State University had uh, to really focus on how do they make themselves more um, sustainable and meet goals that President Winterstein had in place. But also it was a look at their College of Agriculture um, leadership and them saying, you know, hey, the ag industry is going to get it, is getting a ton of push from their supply chain to be more sustainable. And as the leading university in agriculture, 
that Iowa State is, we need to be on the forefront of thinking about how are we being sustainable in our practices. And so they reached out to me and just said, hey, you've been working with Iowa State for the last uh, couple of years on some some really neat initiatives. And Alliant Energy is known for their renewable energy practices. Where is there a collaboration opportunity? And they specifically had some, some um, initiatives going on with their research farms. They just added the Kent Feed Mill not too long ago. Um, they have new turkey facilities, uh, new, uh, new facilities across their research farms portfolio. And so they, they had an interest of, could we service, serve renewable energy to those farms? And how could we leverage programs or products that Alliant Energy can, can uh, do as a regulated utility to support the university and those sustainability goals? So that's, that's where the initial start was, was how do we get renewable energy to the farms so that they can start to talk about how it demonstrates from there. Um, you know, the greatest thing about being around really, really smart people, both uh, at Alliant Energy and at Iowa State University, is to get them in a room and say, what's the possibility that can happen? And seeing people shoot for the moon with the hope to land among the stars. And I think, you know, I think what we've got going on with Iowa State is uh, a great demonstration of just having an open mind and being both pragmatic and optimistic about how this can benefit uh, our customers, our communities, uh, the state of Iowa as a whole, and the, the nation as a whole to be really a um, an opportunity to showcase how renewable energy and agriculture work together. You said Alliant we got involved with this three years ago, but the idea is not new. The, the idea and where is, did the idea come from? Yeah, the idea is not new. It, it's been going on. There's a lot of agrivoltaics being done over in Europe. Um, he, g- really great showcase pieces. There's places here in the United States that are doing it, especially uh, out west in the southwest. So uh, one of the projects that we looked at, um, both Iowa State and Alliant Energy for some uh, support as we started to build this up, was uh, Jack Solar Garden in Colorado. Um, they've... They've done some work with NREL, the National Re- Renewable Energy Lab. Um, and so we got some some really good understanding of what's been happening. But there was nothing in, uh, you know, the breadbasket of the United States that really showed, hey, this can be done in a fashion in Iowa or um, in the mid upper Midwest. It All we've seen it is in more arable land that's not as great for crop production. So it was, how do we, how do we look at this and how do we tailor this to support Iowa farmers and the ag industry here in Iowa? And how does it support the real energy growth that, that will be needed for both the ag industry to continue to their competitive advantage and for us to continue to look at how we become more sustainable as a, as a state. Because Iowa doesn't have a huge blueberry production. We have some bees and we have some berries, but those aren't the big crops. And that's what a lot of these arrays that are multi, the, the, the agrivoltaic, is that's what it is in Europe in some places. That's Or there's goats. Well, you need a lot. That's a whole lot of stuff that you need. So tell me where that thinking has developed in this three years where... What's Ames? What are they doing in Ames? What are they going to put under these and around these panels? Yeah. So um, what we ended up doing is we created a partnership uh, with our program called the Customer Hosted Solar Program. So uh, Iowa State leases the land. Um, it's about 10 acres uh, to Alliant Energy. We have built and developed the solar array um, as a customer hosted program. So the the energy goes back onto the grid to support all of our customers. Um, and we take on the capital costs Mm -hmm. and we, we do this. Uh, so Iowa state doesn't have to incur it. We were lucky enough, uh, to continue to again, talk about that agrivoltaic piece and how Iowa state can, uh, leverage that, that ground underneath to do the farming. Uh, we looked, uh, specifically at high value crops. So we aren't doing row crops like corn and soybeans, not to say that there might not be some opportunities in the future to look at row crops, uh, but we we took 
uh, kind of what's been done in Europe and Colorado and other parts of uh, the world and said, well, how do we mesh this? And again, uh, for our utility scale, you know, this is about a 10 acre site. So it's not a, we're not taking a full farm out of production. Uh, and, and with this case, we've got, because it's doing research, we designed this uh, to give Iowa State the ability to do academic research that can be published, uh, but also to be functional, to be able to say, what could a normal farmer do? What could um, Alliant do with other partners across the state? And how do we make sure that we're doing it as effectively and, and as efficiently as possible? So um, the project with Iowa State, we've got five crops that Iowa State will be growing under the panels. Um, they're going to be growing strawberries, raspberries, uh, peppers, broccoli, and summer squash. Uh, and then they'll also be doing pollinators, and we will have an apiary on site, so we'll have some beekeeping uh, and honey production as well. So, you know, I, when I look at it, we've got you got fruit, you got vegetables, and you got some honey to sweeten things up. I think we'll have a pretty good tasting menu after uh, harvest comes in next next summer. Growing food. Growing food. So you say high value crops. Um, that's what those are. So w w land wise. Are you, this this ten acres that that you, that is the initial start of this research? What was it used for before? Row crop production. So, so do you have a baseline of like economic? This is what this produced on a ten year scale. Yes, and so I, Iowa State, a part of their um, their DOE award that they they received, uh, they have economists uh, on the research team that are focusing on what it what what the land made in just row crop production what it's going to make in lease payments from alliant energy to lease the space plus what what can be done underneath the panels and what that value is say if they're selling those commodities at say a farmer's market or back to a vegetable or fruit uh vendor a lot of the issue always with those crops that you mentioned is the labor side so how do you figure in the labor that's needed now to maintain squash and strawberries and and these products you know that's a great question you know right now we're leaning on iowa state to kind of continue to to navigate those waters and figure out what that is luckily they have a lot of students up there a lot of graduate assistants that will be helping the researchers kind of identify that um you know we have in their plans with the doe they have plans to open it up to groups who may not be um uh, may have barriers to access in the agriculture industry. Um, you know, land is very expensive here in Iowa when you're when you're talking about farming. Um, and so I think, you know, one of the fun parts about this um, and rewarding parts is looking at are there ways to leverage this partnership to provide access to groups that would uh, normally not have access to uh, good fertile farmland to grow high value crops. And so that's another thing that we're we're still in the infancy stages of the grant and of the partnership to kind of announce who we're working with or anything like that. But there are plans to um, bring in groups that would be uh, generally um, limited or barriered to access to to agriculture, to the agriculture industry. And how do we help provide that access through these types of innovative partnerships? And my understanding is what is grown under these in this 10 acres is going to like the ISU dining hall. Well, that was a thought. That, that's that's one of the thoughts that, you know, they, the uh, horticulture groups could sell it to farmers markets or sell it to local uh, produce vendors. Um, because I'm not growing it and Lion Energy is not growing it, I leave that, yeah. those details up to Iowa State of what they do with it. And, and, and you'd said they were doing some research. What is it that they're more interested in? Are they interested in, in how uh, efficient a, a solar array can be or are they more interested in how how bountiful raspberries can be or how the harmony is between the two paul that's that's actually where the greatest part of this project is is that we're answering not just one question but all of these questions and what's exciting about this partnership is it's not only a light energy and say the college of agriculture at iowa state this is not just a, a mere one-to-one -one transaction. This is collaborative across disciplines at Iowa State. We've got the Electric Power Research Center at Iowa State. 
Uh, so engineering teams working on the electric power production. What does what does the difference between the growth of broccoli and the growth of raspberries do to energy production? These are bifacial panels, which means that they uh, take in sun on both sides. Um, and so what we've learned initially from NREL is that uh, any kind of vegetation under the panels actually helps cool the panels off and helps them accept more energy production. So that's a part of one of the questions we're going to ask is what what crop actually gives those panels better production, but then also what grows best under those panels? Are we going to see, you know, strawberries uh, grow better? What kind of microclimates are under there? And, how, and Iowa State's going to be evaluating that. And then, like we talked about, the economic value. What's the economic value or benefit to the ag industry uh, and to the, to the utilities industry to continue these types of collaborations? Because you could find that broccoli is the best, for an example. That's a lot of broccoli that we might not be eating. So you have to find a market for it in the end. And that's all, I guess, part of that balance of you might have to have 10 crops. And then it gets to be harder to figure out what works best and, and where. So I guess I'm going to ask what the bosses would ask. Uh, what does a victory look like in this? What does success look like in this partnership? I, I in think, this research, not this partnership, I yeah. should say. So I, I think the research is, the, the the success would be to just get a better understanding. There is no baseline of what what the best stuff is for our, our environment, our climate here in, in Iowa. So even just getting a baseline of understanding, how does this work and what are the best, um, what are the, what's the best information we can get if we want to expand and grow this, this type of operation or continue to do this work? What's it, what's it going to look like? And that's why having, you know, an entity like Iowa State doing this with, again, that cross-discipline research team, we feel very, very lucky and um, appreciative to have that partnership to be able to know that we have some of the best in the world working on answering those questions. You mentioned you looked at Colorado for ideas. Where are other partnerships like this one, uh, research and, and private entity working together across the country to find out it's different in Maine versus South Carolina versus Nevada? Yeah, so um, the DOE did grant um, some projects all across the United States uh, in the agrivoltaic sector this last year. Um, Iowa State and Alliant Energy's project was actually the largest grant that was um, given out by the DOE for this uh, utility-scale agrivoltaics. Uh, there's not a ton going on. There is some projects here and there across the United States that are doing some great work, uh, but for a regulated utility and a university to be doing this work, we are really uh, in a new frontier, and we are on a precipice of um, excitement in this area. There's not a lot of um, utilities that are working cross collaboratively like this on agrivoltaics. Uh, there's some there's some other projects around, but I would say ours is one of the first and really kind of doing this this in depth collaboration. You're the blueprint for somebody else. We hope to be, yes. So there isn't anybody to call, hey, they're going to be, excuse me, calling you. Yeah, and yeah. That, that's that's the excitement I think here uh, that, that we have as a utility is we see this as an opportunity to be an industry leader and to really say, okay, let's live our values at Align Energy to be bold and think beyond and be innovative. And, I, you know, I'm lucky enough, we have some amazing leaders at our company uh, that have really uh, empowered myself and others across our company to say, hey, let's let's look at this. Let's try to see what it, we can do to make it happen. And how, how can Iowa be the, you know, the leader in this in the future? How high off the ground is, as this panel sits, what are we talking here? Oh, great question. So we have, uh, so because this site is is unique because we are working with Iowa State, we designed it in a way to give our researchers some different variabilities. So uh, we have two different heights on, we have two different types of solar panels uh, installed. So we have a tracker system, which tracks the sun and moves with the sun. And then we have the fixed tilt, which is kind of what you would kind of normally think about when you think about solar um, ground-mounted solar. So we have both of those. 
But then on top of that, we have them at different heights. So we have industry length, uh, height in the fix, which is two and a half feet high off the leading edge, um, and then five feet uh, uh, off the ground for the leading edge, which is the lowest portion. Um, and then on the thick or on the tracker side, um, we have the industry standard, which is about five feet um, off the ground. And then uh, we have some taller ones that are about eight feet off the ground. Uh, so five feet, we can get a cow underneath, but we can't get a tractor. Ten feet, we can't quite get a, a good sized tractor underneath there. So is there any thought that at, at some point during this research, there'll be a livestock component added to this? You know, uh, we have we have discussed it with Iowa State in preliminary discussions about um, uh, sheep is probably the only uh, real livestock that would be feasible. Uh, you mentioned goats earlier. Goats are terrible for solar facilities. What's that? They eat everything. I, I figured. And they, they will eat the wiring yeah. off the, uh, the solar array. So goats are not a great uh, fit. Uh, sheep have been successful, and they've they've shown that in both Europe and other parts of the United States that sheep can be uh, really good grazers um, in solar farms. Cows, um, I don't just due to the weight of a cow and and the potential damage that could happen. We don't see this as a facility and just the the space to to get cattle around. Uh, I, I don't see cows being a, a viable option in this facility, not to say that they couldn't be in, in other facilities, uh, but right now we're really focused on the vegetation, um, focused on the beekeeping aspect, um, and, you know, down the road there may be an opportunity to bring sheep in, though we're, we're not focused on that at this time. Are there areas where maybe the land rating isn't as high as it could be? I'm thinking of a bad side hill that, that erodes a lot that has a really good southern exposure to it. it. Do you see that as an opportunity for an array that can work in a partnership like this, or is that just a straight up, that's where a solar line should go? I, again, I think a light energy, uh, I'll, uh, I'll kind of ref reflect back to my renewable energy development team. They do a lot of due diligence to find the right sites, and again, not every not every piece of land is the right land to do it. Um, I'm not an expert in that. So yeah. when when they, they they usually dictate to us, <laughs> hey, we need certain certain variabilities that are going to be beneficial. I know we are very collaborative uh, in trying to find those things and trying to be a good partner to our communities and to our customers to find the right sites uh, and be as collaborative and flexible as possible when we build them. I'll ask you one more of the record to make you uncomfortable. Uh, what about the side of interstates that could be used? Sides of roads where there's high traffic, there's transmission lines, there's already, I mean, what's to, what's to say that you can't put this type of partnership together to, to, to make that side of the road a little better? Uh, yeah, I think, I think the biggest thing, uh, I would say just, this is not my expert opinion, but just my thought process when I'm thinking of risk is just, you know, uh, we, we have winter weather and cars go off in ditches a lot and stuff like that. Not, not something you want to worry about when you've got, you know, seven figures worth of energy generation equipment. So, um, though it may be an opportunity, maybe a few layers out from the interstate, there may be some opportunities. You see that with, uh, with wind turbines across I-80, um, in, in other parts of, of, of the state, but um, solar is viable, but maybe you don't want it that close to the roads just due to um, some safety concerns and just the risks of, of what, what a, a solar developer would take on to put them that close to uh, moving traffic. Even when you look at our sites, we have, you know, we have deer fence up to keep deer out and to keep, you know, keep folks out uh, to put that kind of infrastructure up right next to uh, vehicles moving at a fast pace may not be the most conducive, though there may be opportunities if it's slightly off the, the path. You've been on I-80 and I-35 enough in winter to know that, yes, the, those semis can sometimes, and cars, can really head up that ditch no matter what the physical is. That's just that's just one of those solar concerns because I'm guessing when you have to bridge, put that hat on of, uh, of, of trying to get a community to agree to something and to, to show them the benefits of why this is, you do have to 
there are questions like my ridiculous ones that come up to you all the time. So there's always questions, but you know what I found in in, in my time uh, with Alliant Energy and working with our communities, we have some amazing communities that are always looking for ways to make them better. And oftentimes this becomes a differentiating factor for our communities to have uh, entities, whether it's a solar uh, a solar array or a, uh, a, a wind farm. We have these, uh, most of the times we have communities calling us, asking for them. And, and it's our hard part, or I should say our renewables team hard part to try to decide where the best spots are yeah. to place them. Yeah, it's good to be in demand. Yes. Yeah. Uh, how long is this project going to work with Iowa State? What's the so initial the, study? Yeah, so the DOE grant is uh, four years. Okay, so four years. So at the end of four years, we'll have, we're going to find some things out. How soon before you think you find something out uh, that encourages or maybe makes you change paths for those last two years? Yeah, it, well, I think you just said, years. Yeah, I, I would say I would say the first couple of harvests will give us a really good understanding of things. You know, the nice part is is we have um, live, uh, you know, live active data analytics on the site, so you know we'll be able to see progress fairly quickly, and then be able to continue to compare that and analyze that data over the over the time uh, that we grow there. So I would say we'll probably know within the first couple of years about what some trends are, what some best practices will be, and then be able to continue to work on that. And I know Iowa State's encouraged the the, uh, the solar farm will be there uh, for at least the next 20 years. So I think, uh, you know, our focus is how do we continue to take the work that we're doing over the next four years and make sure that it's replicable, that we can continue to do it long beyond, and maybe it's figuring out what those next crops are or those next advancements in technology are that are going to give our ag industry the competitive advantage that it needs. Then we'll have you back and we can discuss it even further. All right, Nick, thank yeah. you so much. Appreciate it. Thank you. My thanks again to Nick Peterson for his time from Alliant Energy. If you have an email that you'd like to send me, market to market at iowapbs.org is the best email to use for the whole team. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.